Hello, Robert. Hi, Yasreen. Um, good morning from Tennessee. <laughs> good morning. Uh, we are just we, we have just played the, the video of Pivotel and perhaps to put things a little bit into context, could you tell us a little bit more about how COVID-19 has affected the Brazilian election? Well, Pivotel works with um, most of the Inmarsat uh, business units with Maritime and Enterprise, but this is a case study with the global government team. Uh, 2020, um, as you all know, was a very challenging year for all of us. Um, but in relation to the Brazilian election, what happened was that the dates for the election kept getting moving, moved out as uh, the global pandemic and the pandemic environment in Brazil changed. At one point, we didn't even know whether the elections were going to be held in 2020 or not. But finally, a date was set for the elections in November and December. But uh, the result of that was that the timeframes for planning were severely uh, compressed. So an exercise that normally takes six to eight months to plan and prepare for, we really only had weeks to deliver. And uh, that meant that we needed to work very closely with uh, Inmarsat on all of the network conditioning and to establish the network uh, to support the elections in a very short period of time. COVID safety was also a really critical element. Um, the Brazilian government was very concerned about um, exporting the COVID-19 virus uh, from Brazilian metropolitan areas out to these remote uh, and rural villages with their vulnerable populations. So COVID-19 safety protocols was a key element of making sure that the uh, election could proceed, it could be conducted, but the virus not transmitted as part of the process. Uh, the final thing is, uh, as we all know, international travel really didn't happen in 2020. Um, our customer has been used to having an in out resource on site during the election. And uh, this year, of course, that wasn't uh, possible. So Pivotel stepped up and we had one of our in-country uh, support personnel uh, take on that coordination and communication role between Inmarsat's Network Operations Centre and Pivotel's Network Management Centre just to make sure that uh, no issues occurred during the election. I see. Could you develop a little bit more on that? What, what were the unique challenges for the project, particularly this year, and, and how did you manage to overcome them? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. So um, for any election, logistics is a key factor. And for a country the size of Brazil, being able to get election terminals out into all of those remote and regional villages is a, a real task. So I'd like to congratulate our local partner, Smart Trade, on the work that they did. They imported 15 100 BGAN terminals into Brazil. They configured those terminals. After Pivotel had provisioned the terminals, they then conducted end-to-end -end testing. Uh, the terminals were all packed up, and as you saw in the uh, video, um, there was a range of different ways in which the terminals were delivered out into the regional and remote communities, including by canoe and pack animals. Um, once uh, out in the remote villages, the uh, terminals were connected up with the voting machines, end-to-end -end testing was conducted, and then the network was signed off ready for the elections to be conducted. The elections were conducted over a number of days um, through November and December. We're very happy to report that it was um, a very successful project. On the network configuration in the video, uh, we talked a bit about uh, the work that Inmarsat has to do to ensure that there's sufficient spectrum and satellite resources deployed across Brazil for the election so that uh, commercial services uh, are not affected uh, during the times when the election results are being transmitted. Uh, there's a lot of work done by Pivotel as well with uh, its global network. Uh, we had to set up a new APN on the Inmarsat network. Uh, interconnect capacity between uh, Inmarsat and Pivotel had to be expanded. We had to set up a secure virtual private network with the Brazilian election officials as well to ensure that uh, data transmitted could uh, get securely to the Brazilian election officials. Um, operational support was another key issue. Um, obviously, with COVID-19, it made it more challenging, um, but we did need to make sure that prior to the election, we'd established a whole set of operational support protocols. So if something did go wrong during the election, um, we knew exactly who to talk to uh, inside the Inmarsat organisation to make sure that uh, any issue could be identified and resolved as quickly as possible. I'm very happy to report that there were no issues during the election in either the Inmarsat network or the Pivotel network, and uh, that's a testament to the uh, 
uh, work that went on uh, to set up and configure the network before the election. And finally, um, Pivotel is a global company. Um, it just makes it so much easier when we can draw on resources around the world uh, to support the election in Brazil. We had our technical resources in Brazil. We had resources deployed across, uh, right across North America, uh, technical resources in Europe and uh, Australia to support the elections as well. So that's part of the benefit of having a global network and a global uh, technical uh, capability. Thank you, Robert, for sharing the, the challenges. And perhaps could you let us know a little bit more about what were the highlights of this project and what made the project so successful? Well, I think there's four of them. Um, one of the major successes came early on in the project when we sat down with Inmarsat and agreed a very innovative postpaid commercial model uh, for the election. Up until now, we've been running the elections using a prepaid model. That's very good for cost control during the election, but the problem with it is that um, we need to monitor all the terminals, see how the allowance on each of the recharges is being used up, and then very quickly recharge any terminals that uh, have used up their data allowances. By moving to a postpaid model, um, what we're able to do is focus on network connectivity for the, for the terminals and uh, not have to worry about uh, rushing to recharge uh, terminals out in that remote environment. Another success, I think, was the experience and teamwork between um, Pivotel and Inmarsat's global government team and the technical team behind them. Um, we've been running elections with uh, Inmarsat for over 10 years. Uh, the teams understand each other very well. And I think that was one of the key success factors to be able to move so quickly to put the network in place to support the elections. Uh, to date, we've done elections with Inmarsat in Brazil, um, in Asia and Africa. And it's that experience that we've got in working with Inmarsat that uh, has meant that we've been able to be successful in this, uh, this business. Our global systems and support um, is critical. Uh, we've heard um, again today about the resilience and reliability of the Inmarsat network. Um, the performance of the Pivotal global data network is um, important as well. Uh, for this election, we were able to deploy our fourth generation of our Pulsar system, which is a device management system, and that was critical to the election success, giving the Brazilian election officials real-time visibility of data throughput on each of the terminals. And look, finally, um, I think the most successful outcome is that despite the fact of a global pandemic, uh, Pivotal and its partners, Smart Trade and Inmarsat, was able to support um, an election process um, in Brazil for the citizens of Brazil. And uh, I must say, we're very proud as Pivotal to have been able to uh, uh, keep democracy connected. Excellent. Thank you very much, Robert, for joining us from Tennessee and, and sharing with us all these uh, insights on the Brazilian election. We wish you many more successful elections around the world. Thanks for having me, Yezrin.